Starting a new business is an exciting journey, but it also comes with its fair share of risks. Business insurance safeguards your hard work by protecting your assets. Without it, a substantial liability claim could put your personal finances at risk. Liability insurance also gives you a competitive edge in the market. Visit Zensurance forward slash save 35 to get a free quote for the low cost insurance protection you need so you can focus on your growing business. Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hello, I'm Mario Taniguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast. Joining me today on Calgary's podcast is Chris Schellenberger, who is CEO of Purr.ca. Thanks, Chris, for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me, Mario. It's a pleasure. Well, let's start by just uh, maybe if you could explain a little bit about uh, what Purr.ca is and what you guys do. Okay, okay. Uh, Purr.ca is... The, the first ever online app that allows private sellers to list their vehicles for sale through local dealerships. And, and the goal is to help sellers get a full price for their vehicle, opposed to a lower trade-in price, which most people are used to. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me uh, a, li a little bit about the history behind it. How did this start okay. and why did it start? Sure, uh, I'll try to make it short. So I've been in the car business so almost 20 years now. And it, it, I've quit the car business three separate times, wow. mainly because of the industry. I realized I felt it was cutthroat, but it kept bringing me back. I, I worked my way up from a salesman to a sales manager to a director of pre-owned operations for a four-store dealer group. And I realized when customers came in, when we gave them trade numbers, they were never good enough for what the clients wanted. Everyone know that dealers buy low and then sell high. Yeah. So I tried to come up with a way where we could help get people more money for their vehicles. And the only way to do that was to retail the vehicle to the public for them. So um, I started a business. I had a pop-up tent behind a car wash. Huh. And I would just tell people, I want to help sell your car when they came by. And then I ended up getting one vehicle on the lot, two vehicles. And then I grew it into about 100 vehicles on my lot. And I'd sell 30 of those every month just helping people get a fair price for their vehicle in a small town of Red Deer, Alberta. Huh. And then after that, um, I wanted to scale across the country and I wanted to help more people get more money for their vehicles. So what we did is we create a, a platform that allows local dealerships to just implement this turnkey solution so they can help sellers in their area sell their vehicles for a full price. And then in turn, it helps the dealers get inventory that they don't have to pay for. So it's a win-win for both parties. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the name, how that come about. So it was actually called reverse dealers, reverse dealer before. So to be the exact opposite, to help sellers get as much money for their vehicle as they can. And then we actually approached a marketing company and then that we went through a name change. Reverse dealer was a little too long. So we ended up going with Purr, which is a well-oiled machine. When an engine purrs, it just it's a well-oiled machine. It just works. And then we kind of played on the cat sound of purr. And then that's how one of our, it's not a logo. Our logo is purr, P-U-R-R. -R, but then we have like a, a sub logo that's like a cat that kind of yeah. we play throughout our advertisement that you'll see a bunch of different uh, animations. So, uh, you know, when starting this up, what was the biggest challenge you faced in, in, in starting up this new enterprise, so to speak? Yeah. Um, I think the, the biggest challenge uh, we, we've had a couple, uh, the two biggest, so there's two sides, there's the sellers and then there's the dealers. So I'll, I'll focus on first yeah. the sellers. The sellers don't believe it's true. They don't believe like, oh, you're just another deal that's going to help. You're, you're, you're really going to get me more money. At first, they don't believe it, but then they're like, they're hesitant and they try it. And after they try it, they're so happy they did. And then they go and tell everyone about it because they're like, it actually is real. Um, so getting people to trust especially private sellers or sellers to trust when in an industry that is not filled with trust, we have to overcome that by being this new, because every dealership will oh. say, Oh, we're smiles. It's all good. But like, it's, there's no real trust there. So we're trying to build a company with full transparency where we know what the buyer made, what the seller made and what the dealer made. We know all the, how it all worked. And then the other part on the dealer side is just getting the dealerships 
to a lot of dealers like to own their own inventory. But so moving to more of a consignment model, hmm. it's educating the dealers that they can actually make more money and have less cost. They, that sounds too good to be true to them as well. So we're proving through uh, a few dealers now that they can have maximum success and turning vehicles, helping sellers, getting more customers and help retaining more customers. Hmm. Um, so is so this is available throughout Canada? Uh, right now we're in Ontario and Alberta only at the moment. Okay, your plans to expand? Yeah, absolutely. Ontario, um, uh, United States, our next city we're planning on opening up is Chicago. Oh, cool. Why there? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, we have a couple advisors on our team, and there's a couple different cities we could have picked, and we just ended up landing on Chicago. There's no like specific hard reason for that, but we feel it's a uh, pretty good uh, population and just fits our demographic pretty well. So, Chris, tell me uh, from the beginning, I guess, what what got you into this car business? Um, it was weird story so i was actually a, a chicken farmer i was born on a chicken farm of a hundred thousand chickens grew up till i was 20 years old then i moved out west to alberta uh to follow the oil field money and i was in the oil making lots of money bought my first house when i was 21 but then i realized i wanted to live in my house in the oil field you're always working so yeah. i was pipelining uh, just very busy and then after that, I or during the oil field, I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And it says, if you want to own your own business, which I've always wanted, you have to learn sales and then you have to learn accounting. So mm. I quit the oil field and I volunteered. I think I'm the first person ever to volunteer at a car dealership. So I just said, all I want to do is just shadow your top salespeople. I just want to learn how to sell. Wow. And I remember the two two managers like look at each other like what <laughs> volunteer. So and then there's like yeah sure go ahead follow and then so I followed for the first month and the next month I was the salesperson of the month and then the month after that everyone turned on me that it's in the dealership because I was so aggressive at <laughs> taking the leads and then uh, yeah it just ended up and then oddly I stopped selling cars and then I went and sold vacuums door to door. So I did door to door vacuum sales, climb up the, up the ladder there, and then opened up my own dish, uh, office. And then we just started selling vacuums across Ontario. And then our factory got bought out, ended up almost going bankrupt. So I had to go sell cars again. And then it's been that back and forth my, my whole life. So so what the, was the appeal for you to own your own business and be an entrepreneur? Um, My grandpa is he's a uh, serial entrepreneur inventor and i think it's just in my blood i don't know if there's any specific thing like i've always been just like um just selling things um uh, just always trying to flip things make money and i don't know i just it's just in me i don't think there's a specific thing i can think of that made me want to become it's just like in me for some reason i don't know if i have a good answer for that Running a new business can be stressful. The last thing you need is to worry about unexpected accidents or lawsuits. Don't overlook the importance of liability insurance. It's a critical investment in the success of your business. Protect yourself, your assets, and your reputation by securing the liability coverage you need. Take the first step in safeguarding your business. Today, go to zensurance.com forward slash Save 35 for a free business insurance quote. Get the low cost insurance protection you need from Canada's small business insurance experts. You know, when you look at the 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 area of selling, uh, what's the key? What's the key the to key. being a successful salesperson? I think there's a couple things. You have to believe in what you're selling. I think that it's very important. You have to believe in it. Um, another piece is being relatable. I think it's very important to relate to the people you're talking to. And but the number one thing is being inquisitive, asking questions to learn and be a detective, uncover the problems by asking questions. Because if you just try to sell what you have, like if I try to sell per and just say, this is what we do, we're going to get you the bad people like, yeah whatever we've heard that but if you say like so if you're going to sell your vehicle right now um 
what options do you have? And they'd be like, well, I'm going to go sell privately or I'm going to sell to a dealer, but I don't want to sell to a dealer. Then you like, why don't you want to sell to a dealer? Well, because I know they're going to give me a low price. And then if they said, well, I'm going to sell privately. Well, do you know how to sell private? Do you have access to banks? And just by asking these questions, like, no. Well, and then like, do you know of any other solutions? And then just uncover all the problems and then offer your solution pending that your solution is a solution to their, the problems that you've uncovered. And I think yeah. that's simple key. So let's talk chicken farm. <laughs> <laughs> where, so where was this? It was in uh, Cambridge, Ontario, just ah. outside of Cambridge, Ontario. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah. and that was like a family farm or? It, it was a corporate farm. So it was a big, like we, we lived on a hundred acres. We had 14 chicken barns, 100,000 chickens. Workers would come to our house every day and oh. uh, they would help work on like, uh, work on the farm, cutting the grass with the chickens and stuff. So, but when I was 12, I, I was put to work collecting eggs, um, moving chickens to market, uh, emptying out the 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 barn, spraying them down, disinfecting like all the the filthy okay. filthy jobs that come with it. Okay, I have some experience with that, but how did you deal with that smell? You, you get used to it, and believe it or not, chickens aren't the the very bad smell that you smell when you go out into the country, unless it's being the manure is being spread onto the fields that is terrible but we 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 stored it but we didn't spread it all over the place so the yeah. smells weren't too bad and you get a little mask <laughs> <laughs> and what did you learn what did you learn from working on the chicken farm that that did you well for for the rest of your life and, <laughs> and your career yeah i would say the number one thing i learned is work ethic just work, work, like when there is a job to do, put in the work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, you know, when you look at uh, the entrepreneurship side of things right now, um, mm -hmm. let's let's look at it a couple of uh, different ways. First of all, the positives. What, what's a positive for you and what do you like about being an entrepreneur? Um. I like the the challenge of like I my home my motto my Instagram is stay uncomfortable with the number one and it's ah. all about staying uncomfortable and learning so going through the, the the painful areas that most people won't to create a solution for others like it, it's very painful for us to work the way we are right now we're we're not making a killing off every deal. Yeah. All we're trying to do is help sellers. We're trying to give first and in we have a long-term play and it's all about to me the the challenge. That's what I enjoy. The working hard at something even though it's very difficult. Yeah, uh, but it does allow hopefully freedom in the future mm. potentially. So like I'm not looking to retire or anything, but I I do well, just like having the freedom so I'm not trapped. Yeah. Even though right now I'm trapped for time because I'm out working, working, working to try to yeah. be up for later. So what on the flip side of things, what's kind of the, the negatives of being a, an entrepreneur? What don't you like about it? Um, it there's a lot of stress. Like yeah. th there's some good moments, but th they're never never long lasting. It's there's always problems to solve and they can pile up and they can be very stressful. And I think that's the most difficult. And then time away from family. Um, I have three kids, a wife, like it's, there's a lot of time. Like right now I'm in Ontario, my whole family's back in Alberta. And it's just, yeah, very time consuming. But then there are times where if I had a regular nine to five, I might not be able to make certain things as well. So it's yeah, challenging. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, you know, we all know that uh, it's it's um, it's a 24 seven job, basically being an yeah. entrepreneur. What do you do? Uh, you know, when you do have spare time, uh, what do you do to relax and uh, enjoy yourself? De-stress. Uh, so it's been getting busier and busier. So those are it's becoming a little bit less. But I, I do um, I practice jujitsu. Oh. So 
when whenever I even though the last couple of months I have not been able to like um, so I'm a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Oh. And that is like my number one de-stressor, like the brotherhood of the people. And then the, the challenge of getting your butt kicked every single day on the mats, like, yeah. but it, it's, it, but it's physically, um, it, like you release a lot of stress there too. Wow. So that, that's one of the things I, I really love to do. Um, and my, my, two of my kids started soccer this year. So watching them play soccer is very relaxing for me. I'm just hanging out with the wife and kids at home. Yeah. Do you think that's much time for it? Yeah. That is, do you think that's one of the, the biggest uh, challenges for being an entrepreneur is finding that balance where, where it's not work like all the time? It, it has to be. Yeah. It, I, I can't speak for other people, but I don't know how you could possibly be so immersed into something that's so difficult and not struggle with the balance. So it feels like, I have my family and at home, and then I have the business, which is an, feels like another family member. So it's like you got to balance them, and then they 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 help each other. Yeah, and yeah, so it, it has to be difficult for other entrepreneurs. And if there is a solution out there to make it all succeed with having little less time, then please let me know. Yeah, I guess you know, in, in many ways, you talk about her and uh, you know being you know a well running and uh, a smooth machine type thing. I yeah. think uh, the case too when it comes to uh, to being an entrepreneur is that finding that balance so that you are because if, yeah. if you are doing uh, you know work all the time and and nonstop, uh, you know that leads to so many issues like burnout and you name it, right? And, For yeah, sure. So it becomes more important that way. Right. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, as you uh, developed on your entrepreneurial journey, um, mm -hmm. where did you find, uh, I guess, information or or uh, inspiration to be an entrepreneur? Um, I always, like, I'm a, years ago, I studied a lot of, like, I call them motivational people, salespeople, like um, like old salespeople, like Zig Ziglar, oh, yeah. uh, Brian Tracy, uh, those types of people, and Jim Rohn, the the older crew, and then the newer, like and then Tony Robbins, those kind of things. Read a lot of books. Um, that's where I got a lot of my inspiration. And now you can find a lot of like collaborations of these on YouTube. You can watch videos, inspirational stuff. But the thing that actually makes me like i feel i'm trying to get to a point where i don't need that stuff and I, I don't know if i do at this point but it's just do what i know i need to do and not focus on whether it's right now makes me feel happy whether i feel like doing it or not that that doesn't matter it's just like if this is what i've been working towards then just go out and do it whether you feel like it or yeah. not and that's that motto of the stay uncomfortable that um i've been practicing all right. Excellent. Well, thanks, uh, Chris, for joining mm -hmm. us today. For sure. Well, thank you very much, Mario. It was a pleasure. All right. That was Chris Schellenberger, who is CEO of Purr.ca. I'm Mario Tonaguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast, today with Calgary's Podcast. Thanks for joining us.